Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, today is the first day. So I'm going to give you an overview. So first, uh, please go to uh, my personal web page. Okay, I don't have to write, right? So chat. Okay. Chatting pain. Where is that? Okay, chat. Okay. Please go to that page. Okay, then uh, scroll it down. Scroll down. Then you can find a link to link to our uh, class page, this one. Uh, ID and password, ID, uh, reg uh, course uh, registration number, this one. Triple uh, A, seven, 90, okay. And password, ESCA. So go to here. And uh, you can find PowerPoint and uh, everything, okay? So uh, this PowerPoint is the, this one, first one, course introduction, okay? Okay, let's get started. Uh, how many students? 22, okay. Okay, uh, the course information first. I am Professor Sotewon uh, teaching this course. And uh, we are going to use this one as a textbook, the ARM programming. Uh, I wrote this book uh, two years ago. Uh, I try to use you know, friendly and very you know, easy language. And uh, this is uh, one and only book uh, dealing with Cortex uh, application processor. Look, look at this. Cortex A, right? Application processor. There are three flavors of uh, uh, three flavors in Cortex uh, family. Cortex, Cortex application processor, and uh, real time processor R, then microcontroller. Right? So that is the only book uh, dealing with this application processor. Okay, uh, in, addition, in addition to this textbook, uh, we are going to use uh, several PDF uh, document, uh, starting from um, a TRM, Technical Reference Manual, which is posted here. This one, okay, if you click on this, then it is asking you to enter password, same password, ESCA, right, so this one. So it'll take time. So, you know, pretty huge document, 3,000 pages. And uh, uh, JetBoot and Jink 7,000 technical reference manual. This is the board uh, we are going to use uh, throughout this class. Uh, it, it is called JetBoot. And at the center of this board, there is a device called Jink 7,000. So you, ha you, have, you need to read, uh, the data sheet to use this chatbot and this device, okay? And also some data sheet uh, uh, explaining IO devices and sensor and actuators. I'm going to show you, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to uh, post the PDF, uh, the data sheet later on, okay? So this one, um, uh, TRM, uh, roughly, 3,000 pages, pretty huge, right? You don't have to read everything, only some sections, uh, some sections you need to you know, read. Okay, then uh, prerequisite, I assume uh, you have taken uh, these courses, okay, operating system, computer architecture, digital logic design, and C programming. And my class page and office hour, uh, you can ask a question uh, during the class or after class, or you can make an appointment. 
and come to my office, uh, Aginning Sangwalgwan 320. Okay. I usually stay in my office. You, you know, you come to my office and knock the door and come inside if you think I'm not doing anything useful. Okay. And contact information. Okay. Uh, let's talk some more about uh, our experiment, uh, the board system, right? Jetboard. A uh, little bit, little introduction about Jetboard. Uh, we, we have uh, at the center, uh, Jink 7000 device. Uh, it has two ARM CPUs, Cortex A9 uh, processors. And we have a main memory. How big? 512 megabyte uh, main memory. And all the other devices are IO, uh, IO modules. Okay. Uh, we have uh, a switch and LEDs and push buttons, uh, a UART connection, and Ethernet uh, port, HDMI, VJ, and so on. Many different IO devices, okay? So that is complete computer system. What is computer system? Computer system, from the hardware perspective, there are three big components, CPU, memory, and IO devices, a lot of IO devices, right? So we have everything. CPU, uh, memory, and many different IO devices. So on the flip side, if you turn back, then uh, you can find a clock oscillators, two clock oscillators. Uh, first one is running at uh, 33 uh, megahertz. The other, 100 megahertz. Uh, let's take a look at a uh, little bit in depth, uh, in depth of this Jink 7000 device, because we are going to play with that device. Okay, so that is the picture. That is a block diagram of uh, Jink 7000 device. Jink 7000 is composed of two big parts, PS and PL. Jink. Uh, processing system is uh, orange shaped uh, rectangle that is processing system and that is a block diagram. PS, right? Processing system, PS. And this yellow box that is called PL, programmable logic. Uh, if you, uh, I'm, I, I'm not sure how many, how many of you have heard about, have heard of this terminology, FPGA. Field programmable gate array. So that is essentially, you know, PL. That is essentially the PGA. You design your custom hardware uh, on your computer, then you can download it to this PGA. Okay. So PS inside the PS, we have two ARM CPUs. Uh, this ARM CPU can access. Uh, the device you you know designed inside this PL, okay, using software. So take a look at this PS. Okay, look at this PS. Uh, two CPUs, ARM, um, and we have some internal memory, okay, on-chip memory, two fifty-six kilobyte, and we have uh, several I/O devices like I squared C, CAN, UART. SD uh, controller, USB controller, Ethernet controller, and so on. Okay, and then uh, that is PL, this gray part. Okay, this gray programmable logic. Okay, this one. Okay, so in this class, we are going to use uh, we are going to use this CAD tool called uh, Bivado, and also Bytis. Bivado is used to design hardware system. Again, uh, you design your hardware using Vivado and download it to this uh, FPJ, the PL section. Okay, so after designing hardware, you need to write software, right, to use those IO devices. And we are going to use Bytis IDE, Integrated Development Environment, to write software. So after developing hardware and software, you can download it to PL section hardware and software 
goes to either uh, on chip memory. Okay, on chip, that memory is inside this uh, uh, you know, orange rectangle, or it can go to software, it can go to DDR, this DDR, external memory. So either on chip memory or external memory. Okay, so the first, I already posted a first assignment here. Uh, you know, first assignment is pretty easy, but it takes time. So install Vivado ML uh, machine learning, actually. ML is machine learning, standard edition, okay? It is free version. You don't need a license to use that uh, CAD tool, okay? That CAD, computer, Aided design CAD CAD tool. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm going to give you one uh, one week, and uh, you need to just follow this rep instruction. Okay. To install Vivado and uh, Vitis. Uh, but the real warning is that uh, it is a huge uh, uh, software, so you need at least a 100 gigabyte uh, space, okay, for installation. Okay. Please make sure you have uh, enough <clears throat> hard disk space. Uh, available. Okay, then uh, why why we are talking about? Okay, so objective first. Mm. I'm going to ask uh, some of you to read PowerPoint because uh, otherwise I'm losing my voice. Again, look at look at this. I'm already losing my voice. Okay, so uh, can you please turn on your webcam? Okay, this one. Uh, uh, Q1, can you please read this objective? Uh, understanding of uh, computer systems or industrial control systems through hands-on reps, hardware, prepares, TPIO, UART, ADC, uh, ITC, ETC, a design and integration into Cortex-A9 based, based system, sensors and uh, actuators, software, um, assembly, a programming with the Cortex A9 based system, basic ARM programming, timer and UART programming, interrupts and uh, exceptions programming, cache and uh, TLB ma manipulation. Uh, I'm not sure to read this. T, trust execution environment with a trust zone. Okay, thanks. Uh, objective is, uh, I like you to understand the fundamentals and the principle of computer system. Why? Uh, because industrial control system is nothing but, you know, computer system, one kind of embedded system. What is computer system or embedded system or industrial uh, control system? Uh, from hardware perspective, it has CPU, memory, and IO devices. And especially in industrial control system, uh, it is taking uh, input from sensors like you know, light sensor and you know, pressure sensor, uh, what, the distance, the ultrasonic sensor, right? And GPS, it is taking input from sensor and drive some actuators to control robot arms and conveyor belt and so on. Okay, so IO devices, okay. So uh, in the, again, industrial control system is not different, not that different from, you know, embedded system, just one kind of, you know, computer system, embedded system. So to fully understand uh, industrial control system, you should understand these things, you know, CPU, how to, how to, uh, how to, how, you know, computer system works actually how computer system works how io 
is interacting with CPU, right? How to take input from IO, then based on that, how to drive you know, this, those actuators. Right? Uh, for that purpose, okay, we are going to we are going to design some simple simple hardware using the tool, okay, using the Vivado. Okay, then take input from sensor and drive some actuators. Okay, simple actuator though, right? Like the motor, a DC motor. Okay. And after designing this hardware, we are going to write you know software uh, from scratch. Okay, no one is providing very nice environment. There is no operating system. We are going to design everything from scratch. Okay, everything from scratch. So for that. Uh, you need to you need to understand. Uh, you need to learn uh, the instructions this CPU is providing. Okay, we are going to use ARM uh, Cortex A9, right? Cortex A9. So what kind of instruction? What kind of machine code this CPU is providing? We are going to study some essential instructions that this CPU is providing, and uh, using that instruction, we are going to touch those I/O devices. Okay, we are going to touch, okay, sensors, actuator, timer, uh, UART, and so on. Uh, analog to digital converter, I2C, those devices, okay. And interrupt exception. Interrupt is very important mechanism uh, to communicate uh, between CPU and IO devices, okay. Some event happens in IO device, then you have to let CPU know, right? That is done through interrupt. So that is very important mechanism. Also exception, exception also, you know, very uh, fundamental mechanism for computer system to work. Uh, and probably we are not going to talk about TLB because in ICS is very lightweighted system and virtual memory is not typically implemented. So we are not going to talk about TLB. Uh, and finally, uh, TEE. Okay. Trusted execution environment will be discussed. So what is TEE, security feature, right? Every CPU vendor is providing some kind of security feature, right? ARM um, is providing a technique called trust zone. Okay, Intel, Intel is providing technique called SGX, software guarded uh, extension for security. So we will talk about this TE also. And take a look at, take a look at, uh, okay, so before that, and that is like our experiment environment. So using this jet board, uh, we are going to connect some sensors and actuator. So that is this one, uh, you know what this is? There is a light sensor, okay? So using this sensor, you can take input, okay? So you can measure the, the brightness of ambient, how bright this ambient, right? And based on that, uh, probably you can, you can control the LED, okay? Too uh, dark, then you can turn on LED. Simple example, just, right? And uh, that is the DC motor, right? You can control, you can attach some you know, robot arm here, then based on that sensor input, you can control this robot arm, right? And that is what? This one is gravity sensor, okay? gravity sensor. So we are going to connect uh, those IO devices, those sensors to take input, to check out the ambient environment. And based on that, you can react, right? You can drive this actuator, uh, and also turn on those LED, you know, some message, send some message and so on, okay? And we are going to also use the IO devices in, inside this Jink device, okay? So going back to five here. So inside this Jink, we have uh, several IO devices, okay? So we can use those IO devices. Also, you can custom design your own your own hardware inside the PL, okay? And we can touch those IO devices okay, using you know, software, okay? 
So that is our experiment environment. And this one, uh, do you know what this is? This one is a logic analyzer. I found out this very cheap version of a logic analyzer. So what, what is that for? So you make connection, you make connection like this, and uh, what if you are not able to access? So for some reason, for some reason, what if you are not able to access a register inside this gravity sensor? And how do you know what went wrong? Then probably you want to measure, measure the pin, measure the you know pin signals, right? Pin signals, right? Clock is running like this. Clock is coming in, and this address. Address is coming in in response. Data is the gravity sensor is providing data. So you want to see this the waveform. Okay. So using this logic analyzer, simple gadget, you can check out this detailed the hardware operation, real time. So I'm going to distribute uh, these uh, sensors, uh, logic analyzer, and these wires, and jet board to you after uh, registration is finalized. Okay, probably next week. Uh, any any question about this uh, environment? Okay, let's move on. Okay, then uh, why? Uh, so why we are uh, playing with this jet boat? Uh, it has something to do with industrial control system. So yes, uh, take a look at this uh, video clip. So two examples. Okay. okay, let me play it on Brave. Okay, so let me, so can us, can you hear the sound? Okay, take a look at this. That is industrial, example of industrial con uh, control system car manufacturing facility. It is automated, right? And computer controlled, computer controlled you know, system. It looks very complicated, but if you go deep, then simply a computer controlled system. some grinding things and some moving things around based on sensor input, right? Or predefined sequence based on predefined sequence. Fast forward, that's interesting. It is using robot arm okay, to move things around and do some you know, jobs. So the one example, okay, this is one example. And second example, uh, semiconductor fabrication facility. Okay. Japan, South Korea, Europe, and North America. What is too many advertisements? So let me use this brave browser. Japan, South Korea, Europe, and North America. Okay. What is Along with subsidiary so inside, PSM semiconductor China, fabrication China, facility. So Samsung, US right? TSMC. And SSMC, systems on silicon manufacturing, another branch of TSMC based in Singapore. They also have offices located around the world, including China, India, Japan, South Korea, Europe, and North America. 
What is WaferTech? WaferTech is a large subsidiary of TSMC, a pure play semiconductor foundry that can be found in Camas, Washington in North America. It has been recorded as the second largest pure play foundry in the United States, coming in closely behind Global Foundries, which is based in Malta, New York. Currently, there are 1,100 workers at WaferTech, but this number will definitely increase over the next decade. WaferTech was born in June of 1986 as a chip from TSMC, including its new, as of 2014, A8 and A8X SOCs. And just to clarify, if you were wondering what SOC stands for, it means Systems on a Chip, an integrated circuit that contains the required components of an electronic system all on a single chip. These are found in the majority of devices we as the average person use today. TSMC later produced the A9 SOC along with Samsung for Apple, most likely to increase the production rate of the iPhone 6, the latest iPhone at the time. Eventually, the A9X SOC was being made exclusively by TSMC, proving that Samsung was no match for TSMC when it came to producing high quality, high quality. Okay, I think uh, that is enough. So, you know, ICS, industrial control system, uh, simply speaking, it is again, you know, computer controlled, computer controlled system taking input from sensors and based on the sensor input you you know move things around right you you know turn on some machine turn off the machine okay, you increase the volume decrease the volume you fine tune some you know the water level, levels and so on right so based on sensor input you know driving actuator right based on sensor input based on sensor right based on this sensor input you are driving this, this actuator. So this experiment environment is a super simplified version, super simplified version of ICS, okay, industrial control system. We very simplified, okay? So uh, industrial control system, okay? So take a look at this uh, block diagram. Uh, Chino, can you please? System monitoring, real-time data acquisition, automatic control and management, decision making. Okay, uh, the thing you have to look at is this ICS, right? Industrial control system. And you have sensor, sensor, right? Temperature sensor, and you ring a bell. PLC, PLC is a programmable logic controller. So it is essentially microcontroller. PLC, that is essentially micro controller. Okay. Uh, some people use some different terminologies like micro or processor, uh, CPU or processor. Right? So microcontroller, uh, that is typically used to as the name implies, control, right? Control IO devices, right? Take input and control the output, right? But uh, for that purpose, you need, for the purpose, you need a CPU, CPU and memory and IO devices. The same thing goes to, you know, microprocessor, CPU and processors, right? So microcontroller, uh, PLC is just the microcontroller. Using microcontroller, you take input, and based on that input, you can you want to ring a bell, and you want to control this uh, digging. Uh, uh, what is that? You are digging something, okay? So P using PLC, okay? So PLC uh, is uh, sending uh, sending uh, information to this SCADA system. SCADA means supervisory control data acquisition right so it it, it it is collecting data this computer system this computer system is collecting data from from these plcs then uh, uh, do some data analysis based on that you can collectively uh, control uh, these you know machines and synchronize uh, those machines 
right? It's using SCADA system. Okay, so block diagram, ACS. Uh, same message. Uh, you have a PLC connected to this equipment. A second PLC connected to this equipment, and you have SCADA system, right? So based on the sensor input, you do something. Sensor input, you uh, move this robot arm. Inside this robot arm, there's actuator like this DC motor. Right? So input and output. Okay. PLC, uh, take input from sensor, control actuators. Okay. So in our department, in our department, if you go to IHAC Bjergwan, uh, we have a miniature version of industrial control system. Okay. IHAC Bjergwan. In uh, so uh, you know, you have, you can find conveyor belt and robot arm and monitor, okay? Monitor. So here we have a PLC. This one is a PLC, Pronable Logic Controller, okay? So take a look at this PLC. Some little spec, specification of this PLC. Uh, this one is from LS Electric, and I don't have a picture, but this one is from a BCBC Electric. And if you look at the specification, you have Cortex, ARM Cortex A8 uh, CPU integrated. Here, Ms. Uh From SH4, Super Hidachi, Hidachi processor, SH. There is a Super Hidachi processor. To, they switch it to a Cortex A9, Cortex A9 CPU. And for you know operation, uh, they are using uh, so uh, uh, operating system called VxWorks. VxWorks, okay. the real time operating system. So real time operating system is uh, different from uh, the Windows or Linux. Full blown operating system that is you know very lightweight. It is taking very small. Uh, space in the memory. And uh, as the name, name implies, a real time, right? Uh, you need to respond to input. Uh, you need to respond immediately to input request. Okay. So that, that is why they are implementing a virtual memory. If you have a virtual memory implemented, then what would happen? Page four happens, then what? Page four happens. The page is not present in main memory, then you have to go out to hard disk. From the hard disk, you have to copy 4K by page to main memory. Then that, that is taking a lot of time. You cannot tolerate that amount of time. And also that is not uh, deterministic. Okay, you don't know when would that would happen, right? So VX, uh, VX works, real-time operating system is not implementing typically not implementing uh, a virtual memory. And in this class, uh, we are going to, we are going to use uh, Altos uh, called free, free Altos. I'm not going to explain this real time operating system. That is your job. You, you need to study uh, free Altos and do some programming. That is a class project. Okay. So free Altos, run some, you know, task. Free Altos run some task one and task two. So task two. Task one is taking input from sensors. Okay. Then task two, based on that task, uh, based on sensor input, then you need to communicate uh, task two. Task two, maybe uh, you want to control a DC uh, motor actuator. So communication is done through some you know, queue or semaphore or mailbox and so on. So you need to you need to study the free free altos yourself, okay, and uh, write some you know code. Uh, okay, this one, Kyungsook, can you please? Uh, communication pro protocol in ICS mode bus you. you it invented by Modicon in 1979. Uh, first bus protocol in the world to be actually used in industrial field. 
and communication with plain text. And IICP, Inter Intercontrol Center Communication Protocol, the purpose by the American Electric uh, Power Research in Institute in 99. Mainly used for communication between different control center for power industry and DNP3, a communication protocol between automation components and commonly used in industries like water treatment, power generation, and distribution. Okay, thanks. In ICS, uh, they are using uh, domain specific, this domain ICS, industry you know, domain, domain specific protocol for communication between two or more entities, okay, like this. So communication between PLCs, communication between PLC and SCADA system, okay. So the one example, so PLC, this is master, master PLC, and one, two, three, four, slave, slave uh, address 21, second slave address 22, 23, 24. So this master PLC want to send some data or receive some data from this slave. Then using this uh, packet format. So you can think of it as like you know, TCP IP communication. They are using simply different format okay, for communication okay, uh, called mode bus. Okay. Uh, so in this case, uh, this PLC want to send some information to this slave device, that device. So function code and data to this slave device to take input or to control this you know, actuator. So uh, if you want to know about this uh, protocol, then you can probably you want to watch this YouTube uh, video clip, okay? But the thing is communication, data communication, right? You want to send the data to, uh, from slave to, uh, from master to slave or you want to receive data from slave, right? Data communication, you want to send or receive data. Okay, that is the purpose. Send the data or receive data, right? And they are defining some domain specific protocol, you know, how to receive, how to uh, send the data, right? That is specific protocol. Okay, so that is why we are using this super uh, simplified, a miniature version of ICS system, right? And we are not going to we are not going to use any library. Uh, we are, you know, doing everything from scratch, from hardware design to software programming. Everything will be done from scratch. Okay. So that will be that in that way you can understand, uh, you know, principles how computer works, and you know. You, you, that will uh, you know, lay strong you know, foundation in computer operation. So once you understand uh, low level detail, how things are working, then you can use you know, ICS you know, very easy. Even though in industrial control system, they are providing some abstraction layer, like Windows and Linux, that is abstraction layer, right? So you can click some icon to you know, browse to you know, surf the web and watch the you know, movie, uh, listen to music, okay. Uh, ICS system is providing some abstraction layer, but we are not interested in that, you know, abstraction. We are going to touch everything, uh, you know, uh, everything from scratch. Okay, uh, so abstraction, uh, you are a graduate student. So I'm pretty sure you understand, you know, abstraction, but uh, let me go through is you know, PowerPoint because uh, the first class. So what is abstraction, uh, Konu? Long time no see. Konu, long time no see. What is abstraction in Korean? Chusangwa. Mm. Chusangwa, right? So what is Chusangwa? Chusangwa is hiding all the low level detail, right? I gave uh, you that example in computer architecture class, right? So combustion engine brake system, right? So almost no one is understanding how combustion engine works, brake system works. Nevertheless, that guy, you know, even baby can drive a car, 
how come? Because that is providing abstraction layer. Okay. What you have to do is you shift gear and press the uh, press uh, press on uh, a drive the accelerator, and car will move forward. Right. If you turn left, if you want to turn left or right, you can control this steering wheel. Right. Abstraction layer. Uh, there is there is a small computer system, small digital logic inside this vending machine, right? So no one is understanding this. Not many people, right? You guys understand how vending machine works, but most of the people don't understand, you know, how vending machine is working. Nevertheless, uh, they are uh, able to take out Coke or Sprite. How come? Because that box is providing abstraction layer. What you have to do is you insert the coin, then press the button, right? There is your job, right? abstraction layer. So computer, same principle is applied uh, in computer and uh, you know uh, mechanical devices. Okay. So uh, if you if you open this box uh, at the center, there is a very complicated, very complex uh, uh, chip called CPU. It is really complicated, really complicated. Uh, digital logic. So no one is understanding, you know, how this digital logic is working, right? But you are able to control. Uh, you are able to use that, you know, device, that chip. How come? Because that is providing abstraction layer. This one. That is called instruction, or machine code, right? So once you understand uh, instruction, Intel CPU is providing, you can fully control this device. But look at this. This one is you know, also very complicated, ones and zeros, right? If you look at this one for one minute, uh, your eyes are spinning, okay? your brain stops, right? You don't want to look at this, you know, ones and zeros, right? That is why computer is providing another abstraction layer called operating system, right? Windows and Linux. So your job is just click on that icon, right? Then you can surf the web, you can watch, you know, movie, listen to music and so on, right? So on top of that, you can write program, you can enjoy gaming, uh, do SNS and so on. Kiwan, can you please turn off your microphone? Can I turn off? Okay, thanks. And in this class, we are interested in this layer. Okay. We are going to do everything from scratch, from hardware design to software programming, okay. controlling IO devices. Okay. So another view, another view. But don't worry too much about this digital logic design. We are going to use uh, the tool called uh, Vivado. Vivado, uh, using this Vivado, you know, hardware design, uh, hardware design is super easy. You can design simple hardware in one minute. One minute, really. Okay, CPU, memory, IO device. Okay, one minute and download it to a PGA. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to show you everything uh, later on. Uh, how about smartphone? Okay. So if you open this iPhone, there is a very important device called uh, application processor. This one is called application processor. These days, I think AP, this application processor is more complicated than Intel CPU in terms of transistor count. So transistor count is like 10 billion, more than 10 billion transistors. 10 billion. In Korean, 100억. Okay. Backhook transistors, backhook switches, 10 billion switches connected together, right? If one switch is not working, then it is not working, right? Super complicated uh, device. So nevertheless, you are able to control, uh, you, you, can, you can manipulate, you can fully control this uh, device once you understand instruction or machine code that device is providing. Inside the application processor, uh, there are ARM CPUs. Okay, four ARM CPUs or eight ARM CPUs. Right. 
So once you understand this, then you can fully control. But that is also very complicated, these ones and zeros. That is why uh, operating system, Android, iOS. Okay. So on top of that, you can do everything you want. Okay. Again, we are interested in this layer. Okay. Uh, okay. From uh, this slide to, I don't have to go through everything. So probably you can take a look at the remaining slide. The remaining slide is explaining, showing uh, computer system, okay, from computer system. Old computer system, 13 years old computer system to some latest, not latest, uh, recent, the computer system. So big difference. Uh, the message is this, message, the computer system, I removed it. Three components, right? Again, CPU, memory, IO devices, right? We have CPU, main memory, and green, green boxes, IO devices, graphics card, hard disk, USB, and so on, right? CPU, memory, IO devices. Uh, North bridge, South bridge, that is also, you know, very super, super complicated, you know, chip. But the main the function of this chipset, North Bridge, South Bridge, it is connecting. It is connecting CPU to IO device. CPU to you know, this hard disk, USB, PCI Express. So simply, it is simply speaking, it is communication medium. North Bridge, South Bridge, communication medium. Connect to connect CPU to IO devices. And CPU to memory, communication medium. Okay. So the, the main message, the computer system, CPU, memory, IO devices. Okay. So same thing here. Uh, here we have one chipset. Uh, thanks to thanks to semiconductor advancement of semiconductor technology, uh, Intel, AMD, they are they were able to integrate CPU and North Bridge uh, together and create one chip. So in the past, uh, desktop system is based on three chip solution, three chips, CPU, North Bridge, uh, South Bridge, three chips. But these days, two chip, uh, CPU and chipset, one chipset. Okay. So main memory, main memory is connected to uh, CPU. And if you like gaming, uh, uh, the NVIDIA graphics card is hanging on to that, you know, that, you know, parser, okay? And many different IO devices are connected to this chipset. So on, again, the message, computer system, CPU, memory, IO devices, okay? Same, same picture, so okay, let's move. Uh, this one is explaining, uh, showing, this one is showing, uh, the so major product, major processor Intel introduced until uh, 2008. So probably worth showing you. And see a ghost, right? So one big guy and in the background, there is a ghost. Someone is taking picture, right? Who do you think that guy is? Yeah, it's me, right? Uh, 15 years old, 15 years younger me, right? Back in 2008, I took this picture okay, before I left Intel. So 2008 was 40 years anniversary of Intel. So Intel uh, put this poster in every, every conference room. And I thought, uh, this one is very good. Th th this this you know, poster is delivering very good information about major product Intel introduced uh, for the past 40 years, and that is the one. So four bit uh, CPU back in 1971, uh, eight bit CPU around this time, and 32 bit CPU from 1985. Okay, so from early 2000, 
early 2000, roughly 20 years ago, right? Early 2000. Intel uh, introducing, Intel was introducing 64-bit CPU, okay? So if you purchase computer today, that is your 64-bit computer for sure, right? Uh, by the way, what is, what is that architecture mean? 64-bit, 32-bit, 16-bit, what is that architecture mean? Yomin, Jong Yomin, you took, you took my computer architecture class. I remember your name. What does that mean? Jong Yomin? 네, 교수님, 제가 교수님 수업 듣는 건 처음인데요. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. I was confused. Okay. Uh, Konu, you took my architecture class. I, I know. Yeah, what yes. is that? What is that? Architecture. Uh, for the bit side, this side is how much the CPU can handle. It's a, it's a length of data path. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, correct. Uh, so the basic unit of data processing. Okay, the better, better uh, sentence. So one good example is ALU, right? Inside CPU, you have ALU. ALU is taking 64-bit, 64-bit, and generate 64-bit output, right? So basic CPU, right? So basic unit of data processing, it can handle, okay, 64-bit data to 64-bit data and generate 64-bit output in one clock cycle, okay, clock. So basic unit of data processing. Uh, in this class, we are going to uh, so we will use a 32-bit, 32-bit ARM, ARM Cortex-A9, Cortex-A9. So 32-bit, 32-bit 32 CPU. That means everything is based on 32-bit, 32-bit. Right side. Okay, there is one. Okay, x86, uh, x86 is generic uh, term to refer to processors from, you heard that terminology a lot, right? X86, X86, X86. What is X86? A generic term referring to processors from Intel AMD, right? So why, why use that name? Uh, look at this, uh, 286, 386, 486, right? something 86. We no longer use that name, right? We, these days we use Core i3. Core i7, Core i5, Core i9, we use that terminology, brand name. But because of that historical reason, okay, historical reason, we still uh, use x86 to refer to processor from Intel AMD. Okay, x86. Okay, let's get this. Uh, this slide is trying to explain uh, chipset and connection between CPU and IO devices. So let's go back to, okay. So connection, connection between CPU processor to all different IO devices, the backbone, backbone connection. That is based on PCI Express computer, okay? Connection, the protocol. You know, uh, so communication protocol in industrial control system, okay? Uh, ICS, uh, they are using uh, domain-specific communication protocol called Modbus, okay? So what is communication protocol? The main, main job is uh, that guy, that guy want to talk to this IO device, talk to, right? To, what, what do you mean by talk to? You want to read the data from this IO device or read, right? Read or write, read or write, that is it, that's it. That is communication, right? Uh, so, and so also, you know, this memory, right? CPU want to write to memory, read from memory, right? Read and write, okay? You want to talk to IO device. That is, you know, communication, right? reading and writing. And that backbone protocol, PCI Express is defining detailed, detailed mechanism, right? How to communicate, how to talk to, how to talk to those IO devices, okay? How to talk to, okay? 
okay? How to send the data, how to receive data, okay? Communication, very complicated. You know, it is a phone book, phone book, you know, thickness, very supersized, you know, PDF document. Uh, if you want to know detail, then you know, probably you can refer to you know, those document, Pizza Express. Mm, let's move on. Okay, it's pretty old. Uh, I think more than 20 years old. Uh, computer system, motherboard, okay. CPU goes to that slot and PCI in the past, PCI uh, slot. So you can, uh, you can purchase, uh, you can purchase some uh, network interface card, a NIC, okay? And plug into that slot. And in the past, graphics card goes into this AGP slot, okay? Nowadays, we use PCI Express. That, that PCI Express, that is PCI Express. So CPU goes to here, okay? And main memory goes to that slot, okay? This yellow and black slot, okay, yellow, black. And that is chipset, okay? You need a heat sink for it because it is paid a lot of power. You need to cool down that chipset, okay? So PC Express, a block diagram. CPU want to talk to you know, all different endpoint device, IO devices. Right? It is defining detailed communication protocol, right? Reading and writing, right? Uh, smartphone, same thing goes to smartphone. This one, probably you can take a look at this. Okay, so iPhone. Uh, every year, Apple is introducing a new smartphone, right? So June, June, June. October, some hiccup, right? Some delay, June, October, June, 13, uh, 15 months, okay? So what happened during this time? Steve Jobs, right? Steve Jobs passed away, right? During time, so there's a hiccup. Then they, they back up a little bit, so September, September, September. So these days, every September, the Apple is introducing new, new iPhone. How about Galaxy, Samsung? So look at this timeline. Uh, June, uh, May, okay, May, April, April, March, right? One month uh, shorter, okay, one month shorter, probably, you know, February, okay. Uh, I was uh, keep, I was uh, kept updating uh, this PowerPoint, but you know, after doing that for five years, I lost my appetite. Okay, no longer update this PowerPoint, so I stopped at you know uh, stopped in 2015. So uh, if you open you know iPhone, okay, the message I'm trying to deliver is you know regardless of computer system, you know general purpose computer system, embedded computer system, so you have three big hardware components, CPU, memory, IO devices, okay? So that is the one, the thing I want to explain. So here, if you open, then that is application processor, right? Here, ARM Cortex-A8. So back in 2010, pretty old, right? Uh, 32 bit CPU, uh, back in 2010. Then you have, uh, what, a main memory here. Uh, all other chips are IO devices, right? So audio codec, flash, some sensors, okay? Some, some uh, it has some sensors, right? Accelerometer, uh, accelerometer, proximity sensor, ambient light system. What is accelerometer? So, so if you rotate your smartphone, right? If you rotate your uh, uh, your smart your your phone like this, then the screen got changed it automatically from this portrait to landscape, right? So accelerometer is detecting your movement sensor. Right? Sensor is detecting your movement, change screen automatically, right? 
What is proximity sensor? Uh, when you take a phone call like this, right? Then proximity sensor is measuring the distance between your face and the phone. If that is close enough, it turns off the screen to save power, right? Doesn't have to be, right? You, uh, screen doesn't have to be turned on, right? And ambient light sensor, light sensor. Light sensor is detecting the brightness of your environment. If it, if it is too you know, dark, then screen doesn't have to be that bright. If you go to a theater, right? Then, you know, very dark place, the screen doesn't have to be that bright. So it dims the screen to save power, right? So there are uh, many sensors integrated in smartphone. Sensor is taking input, then based on that, you can react, right? You can, you can do something. So iPhone, so look at this, uh, iPhone uh, A6. Application processor. Okay, so inside, in this, uh, here, uh, inside that application processor, you have main memory integrated as well. Okay, CPU, main memory, one gigabyte main memory integrated in this same same chip. CPU and memory. Okay, all other things, accelerometer, touch screen controller, Wi-Fi module, gyroscope, everything, you know, IoT device. Uh, iPhone 7, right? same thing, right? So we have application processor right? and uh, main memory also integrated, two gigabyte. And the other things are IO devices, okay? Okay, let's just skip. Uh, take a look at, take a look at Exynos, this application processor from Samsung, Exynos. That is brand name, right, Exynos. So if you uh, open that, you know, not open, right? So that is a block diagram, Exynos, application processor. Here are four CPUs, Cortex-A9, okay? And then a main memory, right? Main memory integrated inside. Also, several IO devices, like timer, uh, 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 HDMI, LCD, everything, right? Those, those are, you know, IO devices. UART, i squared to c and so on, IO devices. So CP, again, message, CPU, memory, memory, right? One gigabyte memory, main memory, and these white boxes, okay? These white boxes, IO devices. So that is Exynos. That is, you know, complete, complete computer system. We call that SOC, right? System, System on chip, whole system is inside one chip, right? Whole system inside one chip. Okay, uh, let's move on. Galaxy S4, okay, let's move on to this. Okay, the last slide. Uh, grading policy, uh, there will be uh, two exams, uh, midterm and final, 20%, 30%. And there will be uh, many assignments. One assignment every you know every week, roughly, right? That is going to take thirty percent. And there is a class project. Uh, I I I I told you right, free altos, programming with sensors and actuators. So free altos code is uh, free altos is free. So uh, you can download it from the the free altos uh, page. Uh, then create some task. So one task is taking sensor input and the other task is controlling that actuator. So based on sensor input, you want to control this actuator. But uh, because we are using uh, operating system, two tasks should communicate each other through some, through some, uh, through some what? Mailbox or queue or Something, something else, okay? So you have to study free altos yourself, then figure out how to, how to uh, write program, how to, create, how to create tasks, and how these two tasks, how to make these two tasks communicate each other. Okay, that is the class project. Okay, any, any that is uh, for today, any, anything? 
uh, you want to ask? Uh, don't be, uh, don't be, don't be shy. I like this class to be interactive, right? So, I like the class in the classroom. I like, I like to give lecture in the classroom, but because of pandemic, right? Pandemic doesn't allow us to uh, gather together, right? So. Uh, Again, you know, any, any, any question? Oh, yes, good question. Uh, if you go to, if you go to the, uh, this lab, the first assignment, go to the first assignment, you need to download. Uh, Bivado, okay, this one. So let me open. Standard edition. Download. So uh, download from download center, right? So that is download Bivado, standard edition free, right? Uh, standard standard edition is free, and enterprise edition you have to uh, pay the price. Pretty expensive, three thousand dollars. But uh, we are using a free version. Okay. If you go to uh, here, so we are using this version, twenty one point one. Scroll it down. Uh, unified installer. So the Windows installer. Windows or Linux installer, okay? Windows or Linux. I don't think they are providing Mac version. So uh, that is unfortunate, but uh, I don't think they are providing Mac version, right? Windows, either Windows or Linux. Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks for that question. Oh, any other question? But again, make, uh, uh, you have to make sure you have enough uh, space, SSD or hard disk space, right? 100 gigabyte, 100 gigabyte for installation. Okay. Mm, if you uh, no question, then we can finish a little early today. Okay. Okay. Then I'll see you uh, next week. Okay. Bye. Okay. Thanks.